This is a 120 volt power supply that can output 360 watts. But this little Lego motor is only rated for 9 volts. Now, the destructive nerd in me wonders what would happen if we chuck an absurd amount of power through a motor that just really shouldn't take it. So, rather than wrecking all of my Lego motors, let's build one from scratch. Now, I'm sure you've all seen what happens when you chuck current through loops of wire. You produce a magnetic field. And we used this principle previously to make this little motor. It could even run fun contraptions like this tank. But unfortunately, it burnt itself out very easily because the contact points were just tiny. Ah, we're done. <laughs> so today, I want to see if we can improve the design so I can chuck an absurd amount of power through it. Will it melt at 120 volts? Well, let's begin with a cage that can host a couple of these massive neodymium magnets. These two are really sketchy. A word of warning here, magnets like these will mash your fingers if you're not careful. Please respect large magnets like these if you tinker with them yourselves. Fortunately, this magnet fits right between these pieces, nice and snug. Now, my table is magnetic and it wants to attract this magnet to it, so I'm just going to take this out for now. Now, this cage needs to be quite strong to hold these magnets apart. Then we can just slide them in here, and they mostly just hold themselves in place. Then we'll need a bit of a gear reduction because we might want to output greater torque to power some LEGO contraptions. So this 5 to 1 gear reduction should hopefully do the trick. And at least now we have options for fast speed using direct drive or reduced speed with greater torque. Okay, let's add this jobby to the motor cage. And then using extreme precision and dexterity, we'll need to design our rotor. And a nice hefty commutator. Yeah, that should do. For my first attempt, I'm going to use some thin 30 gauge wire to see if I can run this motor at lower voltages. It'll have a high resistance though, so we probably can't push that much current through it. We'll start by securing one end with some blue tack, and then after 300 turns of wire on one side, we'll swap over to the other and do another 300 turns. Then we'll need to remove the enamel coating from the ends, secure it, and now we can chuck away the guards, and secure the windings with some rubber bands. In retrospect, I have no idea why I thought this would be a good idea. Then, for the commutator, I had a cool idea. Originally, I was going to use some aluminium foil here, but then realized I had this copper foil tape lying around. Now I can just stick it directly onto the Lego and it'll make contact with the wires. And it even peels off the Lego easily. So now this is our lovely rotor jobby, and we can pass current through this pad, and on the opposite side, this pad. Okay, time to shove our rotor in here and give it a whirl. Now is this motor going to be efficient or well made? <laughs> no. Will it survive 120 volts at 3 amps? Absolutely not. But later, we're going to create a rotor with thicker wires to see if it can handle a full power supply. For now though, let's see how melty things get with this thin wire. Lastly, we need to supply the rotor with power and timing. So these wee wires can be secured to a lift arm, and each one will contact one of the pads on the commutator. Now you can see as we pop the lift arm in place, the wires will alternately contact the copper foil pads, which will also act as the timer for the motor. Now I'm a bit nervous running this on a glass table, but hey, in for a penny, in for a pound. Let's start with a 9 volt battery. Okay, the moment of truth. And... I can hear a tiny bit of something, but nothing is moving. Hmm, are we definitely producing a magnetic field? Maybe 9 volts just isn't enough. Okay, there's a tiny kick, but not much. <laughs> okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's be sensible and try 10 volts. Okay, well, clearly there's some current draw, so how about with 20 volts? Yeah, again, pretty pathetic. Yeah, it just doesn't seem to want to continue running. 40 volts? Even at 40 volts, it runs for a second or two and then just gets caught. Eddie volts. 
This is probably a bad idea. Now, I mean, there's a chance I didn't get the timing perfect, but before I could fix it, these tiny wires were drawing nearly a hundred watts. And... Oh, we see smoke. That is really, really hot. And it burnt the rubber supports. Now, if we measure the resistance of the coil... About 40 ohms. <laughs> clearly, we need some thicker wire to handle this abuse. So this 27 gauge wire should allow us to pass much more current through it before it melts. Alright, maybe we'll have better luck with this one. And indeed, if we measure the resistance of this coil... 4 ohms on the dot. We get 10 times less. So we should be able to pass the full 3 amps through it. Whoa, that is still really warm. Though I'm still not sure it'll survive at 120 volts. Okay, let's give this a try. Ah, wow, well, at least this coil runs, even at lower voltages. Hey! And it self-starts. And a few teeny tiny sparks on the commutator. Let's see what the torque is like. Pretty reasonable torque. Okay, let's add a wheel. Very nice. Now, let's find out how fast it's actually spinning. Please excuse the upside down numbers, but we're hitting around mid 700s in RPM. Okay, time to give it some real juice. Okay, I'll run. Here we go. Thirty volts. Thirteen hundred. Whoop! 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 And we burnt out. Whoop! 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 Shit. Yeah, that smells absolutely awful. Totally burnt through this copper. Well, that was uh, educational. And we crapped out at around forty-seven volts. Oh, totally burnt through. Even after removing that copper tape, we've still got some permanent scorch marks. Okay, clearly we need something thicker than this thin tape. Now this stuff is awesome, it's quarter millimeter thick copper sheeting. So here we go again, snippy snippy. And we can use one of these Lego pieces to bend the sheet around. Now I don't like permanent fixtures on my Lego, so I'm gonna try using blue tack to fix these sheets in place. Now as you can guess, this was an incredibly smart decision by me. Okay, is it perfect? Hell no. But it's probably good enough. Let's see if this works. Yep, good enough. By the way, if you like these silly experiments with Lego and technology, please feel free to like or subscribe. Or you can check out my Patreon to see behind the scenes footage of how I make these contraptions. Okay, let's try this again. Oh, it seems to run a little faster in the high 800s with these new pads. So let's gear down and actually try and power something. Starting with this little fan. Okay. Hmm, not bad, but... A little bit slow. So stuff the gear reduction. Let's try direct drive. better, but I'm not feeling particularly cool from this. I feel like we can do better. And it got me wondering, maybe there are other ways of producing a nice cool breeze. Okay, well, this thing is almost certainly a dumb idea. You know what, I've always kind of enjoyed needlessly overcomplicated constructions that do the same thing, but worse. Now this is a perfect example. So behold, a personal desk mounted fan. But worse, it does the same thing, but requires way more torque and blows less air. We'll add a little gear reduction to make sure the motor can run it. Okay, let's see. Oh, hey, what do you know? It does work in that the mechanical bit uh, moves and the motor is able to run it, sorta. Whoa, what an incredible breeze. 
Okay, this time I'm gonna stick some rubber feet on the motor to hold it in place because clearly we're gonna need to drive this thing to the max if we're gonna get our fan to actually produce some wind. Here we go. We're gonna start cranking. Ooh, nice, 1800 RPM. She's looking a little sparky though. Okay. And we've burnt out. Yeah, those contact wires got toasted. But our copper pads still actually look great. Only some minor scarring. Now this time I'm gonna use some much thicker wires for our contact points. These guys can definitely manage the current. Okay, let's give this a whirl. There, let's go up. 30 volts, 1600 RPM. 60 volts, okay, dead. Yeah, once again, we seem to have stalled at around 60 volts. 60 volts, okay, dead. Though, as you can imagine, it did melt the rubber bands, which caused the coil to get thrown off the rotor. So to fix this, I wrapped some more copper wire around our copper wire. Alrighty, let's try this again. Seventeen hundred RPM at only fifteen volts, not bad. But I wonder what would happen if we just started the motor at one hundred and twenty volts. This has got to be a bad idea. Huh? So yeah, that was a silly idea. I think the copper pads were just melting the blue tack and breaking the connection with the wires. So, like any terrible engineer. Super glue to the rescue. And after curing for a day, it looks ugly, and I hate defacing Lego, but it's probably gonna melt anyway. Now I'll admit, I'm scared of what this might do to my glass table, so I'm setting up on this replaceable wooden IKEA thing. Now this time, I'm confident we can chuck the full 120 volts through it. Question is, how long can this rotor possibly last under this kind of abuse? Well, <laughs> it's time to find out. We'll max out the current limiter, now let's start at 10 volts. Okay, here we go. Well, it's responding well. Yeah, it's certainly not a quiet engine. Hey, there we have it. We've maxed out at 120 volts. Look at it, smelly. Now it's currently drawing around 150 watts. Some smoke. Oh. And so far our contacts are sort of holding out. And some beautiful but vicious sparks being kicked off. And then suddenly the power draw ramped up to 200 watts and died. Ugh, it smells absolutely awful. Oh, this whole motor is absolutely cooking. Well, that explains the smell. That Lego is totally melted. Yeah, well, as we expected, we melted the hell out of this rotor. Clearly the next generation will need some even thicker wires. It's still making weird crackling noises. Well, at least we now know we probably have enough power to get my fan to work. Oh yeah, so relaxing. Woo! 